So please comment down below if you have now been to watch the third of three videos where I am making over all of these tins and odds and ends that have been in my stash. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab. Yes, I am taking my <laughs> junk pile load of tins and galvanized and just metal items and it is time to take this grouping and make them over. If you thought the other paper that I was using in the other two videos was so cute, <gasps> look at these. We have baby animals on decoupage paper in some spring colors. Yes, if you've made it to my third video, you know that I there was a lot of techniques and a lot of things that I wanted to separate out. Though this one is not going to be a huge makeover because this milk can is adorable. There, I don't even see a reason why I need to change it. Other than this cute little cow, I think it needs to be put on it. Unlike the other sheets that I was working with that had the four separate, um, these, the wreaths around these animals are a little bit on the bigger side. So I was really kind of struggling, like how much do I leave? Do I... Um, you know, everything that you work with is new. You kind of have to figure it out. So I just made the decision to cut most of the wreath off and just leave the cute little, little baby cast face. In a case this is your first time checking out what I am doing, <laughs> if you have not seen the other two videos, I'll link those down in the description box. But I am sharing a new technique that I kind of taught myself, um, what to do with some decoupage paper. So... What I'm doing here is I'm putting some Mod Podge on the back of the decoupage pa paper and then putting it onto a copier paper. One, that's going to really make my image pop and it's going to really beef up that decoupage paper. Now next, I like the look of distressed edges on decoupage paper. So I actually left a little bit of an outer ring of the copier paper when I cut it down to size. My paper is still wet and yes, I am setting it on fire. So what this is going to do is it's going to give me d distressed edges. And my control is since the paper, the Mod Podge is still wet on the decoupage paper, it's really only going to just burn off the very tip of the paper, it's going to take the time to burn off the copier paper that is dry. It, it's a nice little control there and it just gives you that nice distressed edges if that's the look you're going for. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put a layer of Mod Podge on the back of my paper and then attach it to my milk can. I want to make sure that it is good and on there so just a little my wet rag just to press it in especially since this milk can had texture so i'm just going to add a little bit of ribbon this is just ticking rib ticking stripe ribbon that is white with a black stripe and then i just have some dollar tree black beads that i'm just going to work on there just to give it a nice little black feature to tie that black cow in with this milk can and then at the end, I'll just add a little bit of, I just have some dried um, foliage, I guess that I got. I don't even really know what it's called. I got it in an estate hall, but I thought that brown went with the other color on this galvanized can. This watering can caught my eye, though it really isn't a watering can. I think it's a planter <laughs> since there's holes in the bottom of it. But I thought that is just fun. Just it's fun. And I like the yellow. I like the little pop of yellow. So I knew I had these cute little chicks that I thought, oh my gosh, this, I think I can tie this all in together. But I want to paint the entire thing yellow. I, that new age galvanized um, is a little too shiny for me, but I definitely think that this, 
this lemongrass color will really bring out those chickies on that paper. I'm just going to be using some Dawn dish soap and some hot water and just giving this a nice wipe down. Though it looks pretty new, you still want to get your surface nice and clean. That paint covered in one coat, it looks fabulous. And if this paper couldn't get cuter, I believe that is actually two little chicks and a duckling. I probably could have burned that excess paper off but that was a little too much excess and I know that I had tried that earlier and it actually burns up higher when you have that much dry, dry paper so it's nice to have just a little sliver of paper just to um, burn that little edge of the decoupage. Now I'm going to go ahead and just tone down the yellow. It's not terribly bright, but you've got some age to the outer edge of the decoupage paper. So I just want to go in with some antiquing wax and some of the Jolie black wax and just touch some of those turned edges, some of the, just those points where it might have had wear and aged and dirt build up over time. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead, I wax that, I want to seal in my paper, so I'm just using the weather defense to get this all sealed in. And does anybody else have that scare like, oh, please don't crinkle on me. Sometimes top coats on the Rust-Oleum spray paint or spray paint in general will crinkle, but since I switched over to this weather defense, I haven't had any problems. I let my top coat dry completely overnight and I just could envision adding a few little of the Millet Page flower transfers just around those outer edges. There's some um, yellows with some oranges in there and I thought, oh, let's bring in one more color. And I just recently got these fake flowers in an estate hall and I think they're gorgeous. I, yeah, I know not everybody's a fan of fake flowers, but if you can arrange them nicely, they will look awesome. So, so all I did was remove them from their stem, put them in some of the Dollar Tree floral foam. I just separated them all around. Unfortunately, I didn't hit record on my camera, but just see how spreading them out and getting the two different variations intermixed with each other just I mean they're so pretty and there's I guess or maybe I am just dying for uh, my daffodils here in Michigan to bloom so and I'm actually going to add some of this green grass I don't glue my floral foam in I just make sure that I have the grass and the floral foam nice and tight that way a lot of times that hot glue will ruin it or you can't get it off so I always like it to be able that somebody can reuse it if they don't you know, if they want to change it out. And now that I have my flowers all arranged, I'm going to go back in with some natural wax and seal those two little transfers in that I just added.
Okay, so this is a watering can. Yes, it's the Hunter Green. I just picked it up at an estate sale. I thought this is a perfect watering can to make over. I love the thought of being able to paint it. So I actually have a blue, the little bunny is blue and I have the perfect fusion paint to match. Well, before I can start painting with the fusion paint, I need to get my surface prepped, Dawn dish soap, hot water, get it all wiped down. Though I'm not going to be painting the inside with the fusion paint, I am going to be painting the inside. So I do wanna make all, sure that all areas of this can are clean. And I loved that this brass feature, though it's fakey, um, has a little bit of tarnish and some age going on. So I'm going to take the time to tape off everything that, yep, everything that is that brass. That I have everything taped off I'm actually going to spray the inside so it's not really you would really notice if I paint the, painted the outer blue and left the inside green so I'm going to go ahead with some black enamel paint and get that inside painted yes I just thought you know for the ease let's just paint that bottom black also so everything's taped off I love fusion paint it has a primer the paint and top coat all in one. The coverage is awesome. So I'm just using a soft bristle brush to apply it. And so far it's been sticking really well to metals. Now it did take me two coats to completely cover, but that is completely normal. The first coat kind of looks glazy translucent and then that second coat really just grabs right on now i just need to remove all the tape and you always think oh was it worth it i always think it is Now, is it sad that I think that my watering can looks just too new? <laughs> it just looks too new. So I want to add a little bit of patina of rust to it. So there's so many different ways you can do a patina of rust. And every object takes the patina a little bit differently. So I'm starting off with just some black paint, giving it a little bit of undertone. Then I'm going to go ahead and add some of the Mod Podge glue, um, which is a little bit different for me. And then I'm going to do cinnamon and nutmeg to give it that rust patina. <laughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and get this all sealed in using the weather defense. Uh, that's going to change the cinnamon just a little bit and darken it down. Another one of the reasons I wanted to add the patina to it was to tie the bunny together. But I also, in one of my hauls from an estate sale, I had some beautiful flowers that I thought, oh my goodness, they would look beautiful in this. So there again, we got to stuff it with some floor foam. And look at these. Oh my gosh, they are like the perfect addition. Though yet again, I got to cut them off the stem. They just arrange better if you can stick them in some floral foam all separated out of that main stem.
So how many of you have these little baskets laying around? I know they sell a lot of the fall mums in them. Um, they are just nice. So I can't actually even tell you if I thrifted it or if it was one of my own. But I'm going to go ahead and put some fabric and some decoupage paper. No painting on this one. Just adding a fun little additive to it. I absolutely love this little baby lamb and I have florals to match so this is why my motivation for my um, the little baby lamb. So we're just going to go ahead and cut them to size and I'm going to be um, gluing them on a piece of tea stained coffee stained drop cloth that I had already done for a previous project that was a leftover piece. And if you watched my other two videos, one of them showed where I had already done this technique. But, you know, it, it worked for the basket. It'll work for this type of basket. So, yes, the thing about gluing onto the copier paper and then cutting it out and then, you know, burning the edges to give it that nice distressed look. Leaving that little bit of the edge of the copier paper really helps control. So it burns the copier paper faster because it's not um, soaked in Mod Podge and that kind of stops and hesitates and thinks it wants to burn more. But the Mod Podge is wet, so it only just gives you that nice little burnt edge. So I thought for an added visual, I'd keep the banding on the drop cloth that kind of had all that yumminess of where the it was dyed. So we went ahead and kept that. But now what I'm doing is the Mod Podge and the paper really, it's wet. So it doesn't really want to bond necessarily to your fabric. But adding heat, I have parchment paper and then a no steam iron and then just like 30 seconds it doesn't take too long to dry that Mod Podge and bond it to that cloth. And I want to add a little bit more patina. Just this is really simple to do. You just take a little bit of the instant coffee and I'm just going to fingertip it in, sprinkle it around and then just take my Mr. Bottle and just wet it ever so slightly and it'll just give some some more added patina. And I like to fray the, the three edges a little bit. So I'm just taking a pin since now this is wet. It doesn't pull off so easy. Should have done that before I patinaed it. But, you know. So now I'm just taking a pin, getting one little individual strand at a time and pulling that. And it'll give you that fray edge. To attach it to the basket, you do need a generous amount of the Mod Podge because the fabric is going to go ahead and soak it in. But not so much that it's going to seep through your basket you don't want to see it from the inside. So yes I've got myself some more secondhand flowers. Oh my gosh these are beautiful and I think they still had the brand new tag whether the person didn't take the tag off. I don't know, but filled the basket with flower foam. I'm going to put some of the very green grass. Yep, thrifted that too. Yeah, I'm amazed at what you can thrift. So I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and tight. I'm going to go through with the florals. I'm going to snap them off the original, nip them off the original stem so I have each individual ones. So now my la last thing I'm going to do is add, I have a string of rusty crusty stars. I think it will look so pretty just draped over. When I attach the fabric 
you know, you're attaching a square onto a round. So sometimes it kind of looks wonky. So sometimes when you add a little other distraction, like the rusty crusty stars, you don't notice it quite as much. So yes, y'all, I absolutely love, I love decoupage paper. I loved ordering smaller sizes, sharing the process, that burning technique. Did I scare anybody? Did I scare you all? So yes, um, this will probably be the same intro, extra, whatever, um, <laughs> for the all three videos because they just, if when I started to put them all in one video, it was going to be hours. <laughs> it was just going to be hours. So I tried to break them down into grouping so you may not see these all right in the same order uh yeah you might you might <laughs> um, of each other it's just how everything falls in line but oh my gosh that burning technique is now always going to be my go-to I was over safety first safety first y'all y'all <laughs> anyway so I absolutely loved it adding the transfers adding colors taking those items that are always overlooked and putting something amazingly beautiful on them oh y'all Y'all, they just have my heart. And coming up with the idea of how to use thrifted greenery and flowers that are, you know, that's too nice. You know, I need to, wow. Anyway, you guys, I hope I have inspired you. Give me a quick comment down below if I have inspired you in a new way to look at secondhand finds. Yes, everything that I used is down in the description box along with the decoupage paper, the links for that, along with Vonda Store, the painted heirloom where you can get colors if you are ready to transform um, like me, moving all from the black and white and doing a little bit more colors out there. So thanks again for watching guys and as always if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much and if you are new and you're checking out this channel, for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!